Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to talk to you about the application of rooting hormone. Now in all the time that I've been propagating plants, both personally here on my farm and also professionally, I've been asked a lot of questions on this topic. The main ones boil down to, does it work? Is it worth it? Is it safe? And isn't there something else that I could use instead of it? Now I can tell by the tone of the question on that last one that you're coming to this video looking for an answer that's different than the one that I'm going to give you. Because basically my answer is yes it does work, yes it is worth it, it's safe, I did the research on that one, and also there is really nothing else that quite matches rooting hormone in the way that you would apply it and how it will work. Now before we get too deep in the topic, I need to explain that last statement. And to do that, I need to show you a little bit about why cuttings succeed and why they fail. Stick around for this first bit here. Trust me, you will come around to understanding why I say what I say about this. If you have managed the basic methods of stem cuttings, your success or failure will almost always come down to managing the growing environment. In this, it's all about balance. If on the one hand, your growing environment is too cool, too wet, too dark or there's too little air movement, then your cuttings will tend to rot quite quickly. If on the other hand, it's too warm, too dry, too bright, or there's too much air movement, then your cuttings will dry out. If you keep your cuttings in that middle zone for enough time to develop new roots, then you win. And there are plenty of ways to take these conditions under greater control, including using timed mist, humidity domes, heating mats, artificial lights, or even electric fans for a little gentle air movement. After the cuttings are stuck, the natural rooting hormones begin accumulating downwards from the stems and leaves into the bottom nodes. When enough hormones have accumulated, callus and then roots develop. But even if your conditions are just right, the clock is ticking. Your cuttings only have a limited amount of stored moisture and energy. My experience is that when plants stall in the early stages, it dramatically reduces their chance of success. Commercial rooting powders, liquids, and gels work because they supplement the natural production of these rooting hormones and allow the plant to begin root development sooner. A number of natural alternatives have been promoted as a replacement for rooting hormone. Things like honey or aloe vera or like this one, cinnamon. And what they're supposed to do is if you coat the bottom end of your cutting, they're supposed to protect the cutting as it tries to root. The problem with this is twofold. One, the evidence is really, really sketchy. It's all basically anecdotal. There's not a lot of scientific support that they do anything to protect your cuttings. The second thing is that they're actually trying to solve the wrong problem. If you do your troubleshooting around your growing zone, if you're managing humidity, if you're managing heat, if you're managing light, if you've got those things under control, then by far the higher risk of your failure of your cutting comes down to it running out of time, running out of energy before it has time to set those roots. In that case, application of rooting hormone helps it along. Application of something to protect it from rot really doesn't help at all. So I'm gonna go through one more topic here, which is willow water, because this one is alleged to be able to add rooting hormone to your cuttings. I'm gonna go take some cuttings and some willow and I'll be right back. Well, I can't believe I got this far into the video without talking about IBA. Now, don't worry, I won't go too far into the chemistry of it, but if you are curious about it, I've made a video on whether it's safe to use rooting hormone. That goes a little more into the background of the chemical of the matter, but all you really need to know for this video is that of a few different compounds that were tested in the 30s and 40s and then onwards for their effectiveness in promoting roots in plants, IBA was the one that was found to have the, uh, the best effect and to be the most stable and usable in products. So it's what's in most commercially available rooting formulations. What's also cool to know about it is that it is present in reasonable amounts in stems of willow. And you can see why that would lead people to believe that the extract of willow in willow water would be effective as a rooting hormone. Now, willow water is usually prepared in a number of different ways. In this case, I've just chopped up stems and put them in water to, uh, I guess, steep. But the other ways people do it, they sometimes they smash it, sometimes they boil it into water, with, all with the idea that the IBA will be soaked into the water, and then you can use that on your cuttings. Now, there's a problem with this. Chemically, we also know that IBA is not very soluble in water. 
at the very highest concentrations that you can naturally dissolve IBA into water, it's going to only be about a quarter of the strength of the very weakest rooting formulations on the market. So I guess marginally you could say that would help, but only on the very easiest plants to root. On anything a little bit harder, usually the rooting rooting hormone formulations. Just to give you an idea, the weakest ones on the market are usually around 0.1%. Uh, on moderate or moderately difficult to root plants, it might be around 0.4%. And in hard to root plants, it might be around 1%, somewhere along those lines. So willow water on a hard to root plant is probably about 40 times too weak to do anything to help promote rooting. So Willow water is probably not a good solution, not to mention which it's it's an issue of you don't know how much IBA you've put in here. It's not very stable. Uh, you'd have to prepare it fresh every time. It's just not convenient, like using a rooting formulation. Uh, go ahead and do it if that suits you best, but it's probably not very effective. The alternatives that I've discussed here today are just about credible. At least there's reasoning behind their use. The ones I can't quite understand are the ones that look like somebody's just looked at their pantry and said, hmm, a banana might work, or maybe a potato, or red onions. And I hope that if you see these out there that you are uh, equally critical to them as you would be of anything that I've talked about here today. Look for some evidence first before you waste your time or food making cuttings. All right, that should wrap up my topic today. If you have any questions about anything to do with propagating plants, I would love to answer those. Leave your comments below the video.